What's good, young lady? Hi. How you doing? Aloha from Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Well, that, that's on my bucket list. That's on my bucket list. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. You're all good. You're all good. No judgment here. Hawaii. That sounds like uh sounds like pineapples and and and, and coconuts and and nice, nice tropical drinks. What's well, not right now. There's like it's raining crazy over here we don't have snow so we have a rain so i don't know if you want to come during the rain time oh uh, yeah i know a lot about the rain where i'm located but i don't tell anybody Shh. and <laughs> how auntie how auntie how what you what are you doing here i see you uh you hit me up you said uh you want to chat about the post office so let's chat yeah i just finished my holiday position but I'm going to start a CCA in a couple of weeks. And I'm super, super nervous about that because I know we have to do the driving course and I know you have to parallel park. So I'm kind of shedding bricks a little bit about that. It'd be happening. It'd be happening. So how, how did that work out? How, let's, let's back up. Let's back up. Mm. So, so um, I know you post uh, quite a few comments, a couple hundred. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> comments, yes. <laughs> Um, and, and, uh, you finally got in. When'd you get in? For the holidays. So I've been applying since July. Okay. I applied for a CCA. Well, I applied for a lot with your help, of course. Um, I got, I applied for the CCA first. I did get like, um, my fingerprinting and background done, but I technically missed the three day mark, but they still sent me. So I'm like waiting for something and, you know, on your, um, your applications it says I'm not hired so I'm like okay I need to accept something so I accepted another CCA but you know it's taking forever and when you email HR they don't respond to you so like screw it I was very vigilant of applying every position for a good like month and a half because of your you know your advice and I took an MHA position and again sent to like um fingerprinting and I asked them like, oh, how does it work? And, you know, you mentioned that, of course, it's on the list. And like once a position comes available, they go based on the list. Like, you know, you right. can wait for like months and months. So I'm like, you know what, screw this. This is crazy. I've been waiting since July. And this was like, what, back in October. So I accept, um, I applied for all the holiday positions. And I'm like, you know what, I'm still going to do the holiday because, Hey yo, at least know I know I'm gonna start. Right, and right, right. Matters. So when I got was working the holiday, I seen a couple posters for like regular positions. I'm like, you know what? Let me start it. And sure enough, I got it. Like within three weeks. I the first week was the posting, the second week I got my acceptance letter, and the mm -hmm. third week I got my start date. I'm like, this is exactly what I wanted. Nice. I yeah, you know, your foot in the door, that made a difference. Okay, so so basically, um, I mean, your area is obviously different than a lot of areas because it's you're on an island. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, post office is the damn post office. You finally got in, then what happened? How, how did it play out? How was work? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it hard? Was it easy? What would it check oh, like? Oh, it was hard. So I was like one of the first holiday hires. And um, there was only me and this other guy that got hired. And I guess he only worked for the week because he got a RCA position. Okay. So how it played out, um, he had to like, I guess he had a vacation for January that he couldn't get refunded on. So he just like left after the week. And so I was by myself for, you know, a few days, but my first week I had out of those six days, I had to work 12 hours for three days and it was very, very brutal. I okay. hated it. And I wanted on the third day, I wanted to say F this, I wanted to leave, but um, only because the manager, not the manager, the supervisor, um, you know, I, a lady thing happened and I was like, oh my gosh, but I had to stay for 12 hours and I was upset because, you know, my feet sore 
and that situation happened and um when I was doing the PO box the supervisor was telling me to like move faster I'm like bitch this is like only my fucking third day this is the second time I'm doing PO box by myself there was like four tubs of mail four tubs of magazines so I'm like girl like how am I supposed to go fast I'm like dying over here and I, I really want to say fuck this bitch do it yourself but I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> I mean I had to like keep like biting my tongue because I kept telling myself like this is a career that I wanted to get into suck right. it up man. it so worked out you you got on as a as a clerk right not a mail handler as a holiday yeah the HDA oh, okay. okay holiday clerk assistant okay so you were at a station I was but then um the 31st was our last day so sad Okay, but let, let, let's talk about the work. Was the I mean that that work is is rough. I, I gotta you know I, I that that's that's that clerk work is 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 pretty rough. That's um what do they call them? They call them sales service and distribution clerks. So you were at mm -hmm. the station and you were you were you what were your hours? Um, so at first I worked the night shift. So when I first started, they started me at like 1 a.m. It was brutal because um, I had orientation on a Saturday, which I overlapped my actual job. So our Zoom meeting was at 4 o'clock in the morning. So I had to wake up at 3 a.m. Hawaii time just to be sure that I was ready for like work and all that. And then um, I got a text message after orientation saying, oh, you start at 1 o'clock in um a.m. on Sunday so I literally had like four or five hours sleep so that was my sleep schedule for the first week I couldn't sleep so Whoa. working 10 to 12 hours on four to five hours sleep the first week it was pretty pretty brutal so you you as a holiday help you did you get overtime when you worked or no oh yeah um usually I worked at least 60 hours a week what from your last job how many hours did you work at your last job give or take a week um that's why i decided to do the um, holiday position because it was a temp agency and it was like inconsistent i've worked a couple times like overtime like maybe 50 hours or so but um a couple times it was only 25 hours a week one time it was okay. only 17 hours so i'm like screw this so it made a, a big, big difference. So were the checks looking all right? Yes, but I wasn't aware of how they pay us. Mm -hmm. So when my second check came in, it was kind of questionable. But then when I look back on it, it's how it is. So in Hawaii, we do get cola. But oh, yeah, I guys. didn't realize your cola is based on the base pay only for 40 hours. You don't get for overtime and like they didn't even pay you cola for night differential which i was working most of the time oh so they don't give you the cola on the night differential no they didn't you know what's interesting is that the colas don't uh, usually apply for holiday help in in the states and they don't usually apply for you know um you know the, the temporary people which are usually the pses or the mail handlers and so on and so forth so you just gave me some information that I wasn't aware of, you know, that, you know, because of where you're located, there's only a handful of places in the country that actually have that, uh, that cola because of the cost of living where, where you're at. Um, but it does look good. It does look good when you get it. That's a blessing. Um, I think even like non-careers do get cold over here though. Cause one of my coworkers, she just started the PSC in mm -hmm. July, and she does get cola. Right, right. That's that's what I was saying. Is that the nine careers uh, typically don't get colas? It's usually for career only, but in certain areas they do. And you're obviously in one of those certain areas, like parts of California, I believe parts of um, Illinois, Chicago, like the the higher cost living areas. But you know, we're not gonna get too serious in this. So got a fat check a couple times. Um, and and then did you get a did you get used to it or what yeah i did um i really liked it it helps if you're working with people that you do like and get along with 
because right, I've worked right. at places um, where I didn't feel welcome, so it was kind of depressing. But it took a couple of days to, for me to get warm up to people, and then I really loved it. It did get used to, to like working the night shift because eventually, from one o'clock, they sent me to like eleven p.m. for three weeks, and then after they sent me to the morning shift because. So what had happened was um, they hired like a couple more people for the holiday after the guy left. So it was just me for like a few days and they hired like two more people. And then like the next week they hired a whole bunch of holiday, but they only worked for a week because I guess the main plant didn't hire enough holiday. So they told them to go there and they didn't want to go. So a bunch of them quit. Wow. They, they lost yeah. out on some good money. <laughs> yeah, so I was sent to the morning shift, which I fucking hated. I hated the morning shift. You know, at the night shift, it's, it's scary because there's a lot of Amazon coming through. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, at times, if you get the work done, you get a little, like, a downtime. You get a breather. You can clean and, you know, that kind of stuff. The morning shift when I worked, I was pretty much the only one that was throwing the boxes. Mm. And I was working 10 to 12 hour shifts like every single day. Like I was so sick of it that I would be like, okay, I would just like leave. I wouldn't tell the supervisor that I'm going home because I'm like, screw it. Everybody else were like either working the clerk the front or mm-hmm. like um there was a holiday guy and a regular who did the um dispatching right. and I get that because when it's after the store closes and they do what they need to do they never came to help throw and I'm like are you fucking kidding me like you guys are guys like why is the famous <laughs> like, you know what's crazy guys? is that a lot of the clerks that I see at a lot of stations are usually female um it's weird a lot of them I'm not gonna say all of them but a lot of them are uh female um and it's kind of wild because you guys got to pick these boxes up you know it could be bed frames it could be anything um tires Mm -hmm. all kind of madness um so yeah you know for the ladies out there that are doing it um how'd you how'd you feel how'd you feel physically did your body get used to that culture shock or what not really um it wasn't too bad so I grew up my family had their own business so Mm -hmm. I worked my whole life so I was used to like carrying stuff and all that kind of thing but I've never used shoes I use slippers so um having to use shoes yeah uh my feet would be so so sore by the end of the day like I feel like I couldn't walk so I told a couple of people my secret I started like rubbing my feet with like um peppermint oil when I got home or before I started I would do that during my breaks and I'll wear slippers during my breaks I was slipping slippers and they were like you work they'd like make fun of me like oh you're wearing slippers I'm like I'm on break fuck that my feet slower what they do tell me I've never heard before I've never heard that peppermint oil on your feet that's the thing uh I know a lot of people are like into like essential oils, like you know, for like headaches and pain and stuff like that. I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but I have used it a few times, like when I have like cramping or like headaches. And so I'm like, bet like medicine is for my feet. And I don't personally like to take medicine too much, but mm-hmm. yeah. So that's the only thing that hurt. Um, my body itself wasn't sore. But after working the morning shift, because I was working so much, my fingers would swell up and I would not be able to bend my fingers. Ow, ow. Yeah. So, but you powered through it. Would you go back? If they said, hey, Kiki, we need you back, boo. Let's go. What you going to tell them? Oh, yeah. I would. I, you know, I know what to expect. I know how the work is. Um, they kept saying, like, it's not this bad during the regular time. It's just the Christmas time. It's bad. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. So I told them, you know, for my CCA position, if I don't pass, like, the driving course or my probation, or if I just don't like it in general, I will, that's a backup plan. I will um, go for PSC over there. Okay. Well, I mean, I would encourage you to apply for one anyway. You know, obviously, just every day. Look, I mean, it's it's probably not as... um as fruitful when you look on, on, you know, the site for your island, but 
uh, there's probably not a lot of postings, but I would still say look every day because just like you see those people that quit after, you know, a week or whatever, you're going to have people that are resigning regardless. And whether it's at the plant or at a station, just go for it, you know, because uh, CCAs, uh, they, they grind, they grind. You might even like the CCA. But if you if you're accustomed and you're 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 good with uh, um, the clerk position, don't don't give it up. You're in the system now, so it's not like you know you 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 don't know what to expect. You did one part of it now. You tossed you know you threw your mail, and I'm sure you got the the mail ready for the carriers, right? That's what you did. You sorted the mail out for the carriers, and now you'd be able to fill out what the carriers actually have to deal with. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I see what they got to do. I'm just like, oh, debate is, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this? But I know a bunch of my coworkers wanted me to stay as a PSC, but I'm like, I at least want to try the CCA just mm -hmm. in case, you know, I don't want to live with regrets. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, I got right, the right. job. Like I can always go for a PSC if I just hate it. Hmm. Well, I think somebody just asked me a strange question on here. Um, I think that you uh, you were one of the many, I believe, that were offered this option of you know, hey, we don't we 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 don't have any you know need for you right now uh, mm -hmm. for this specific position, but they'll always need carriers. If they don't need nothing else, they need carriers and they need truck drivers. Um, so there are a lot of people like, no, I'm not even going to try it, you know, and then there's, then there's the people that are, you know, saying, you know what, I'm going to try it at least so that I can stay in the system. Because even though you're not career, it's easier to trans transition back over because you're still working there. So if you're a carrier and you're working at the station and then and you, you, you're there every day, hey, let me know before anybody else when you guys are gonna be posting for a, a PSC position. You understand what I'm saying? So that you actually have the one-on-one -on -one with the managers and they say, hey, you know what? Such and such is converting or such and such is retiring or such and such is moving to the States. In about you know a month, we're gonna be posting a position. You at least have a heads up and a head start on everybody else. That'll give you the, you know what I mean? Cause you're there every day if you're carrying and then you can make that option and make that change. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you you're you're one of the lucky few that had the option and took the option. You know, opportunities come, and some people don't even have the opportunity. Because how long you been applying? You said <laughs> since July. <laughs> uh huh. And you finally got in. You finally got in. You ready to deal with all that crazy weather? If you, while you're out in the streets. Well, luckily the only thing we have to deal with is you know like rain and it sucks because the station that they're sending me to I've seen it flood when it rains I've seen like years ago it floods you know the bus stop the seats where you wait I've seen it go as high as that so really? I'm like super I'm super paranoid about that and um, but that's the only thing we really have to worry about I mean we have to worry about the heat but that's about it we don't have to worry about snow and stuff like the mainland does Right, right. Okay, okay. So you're ready to embark on your new journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, but you know, shit, it's 2022, like YOLO. <laughs> YOLO, right. Now, there's one thing that I want to pass on is advice. Mm -hmm. And I don't give advice. I'm sure you've heard me say that a thousand times. But because we're chatting, we're kicking it with mm -hmm. J.A., let me tell you something. Don't ever say if, don't ever say if I fail. Cause you, you don't sound too confident in regards to your, uh, 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 your, your CCA driving course. Anybody can pass it, anybody. I mean, there's, I've, I've seen some reckless people getting in there and pass it. So all you gotta do is go in there with a positive mindset. That's the key, obviously. You always keep a positive mindset. Don't think about all the negatives that you read in reviews, obviously, because you heard a lot of reviews, you saw a lot of reviews, I posted a lot of the negatives as well. But once you got in there, you were able to taste 
it yourself as a clerk and say, you know what? It was hard, but eh, eh. So now same thing applies to being a, a carrier. When you go to do your, um, your driving, your driving uh, academy, you just take it slow. You learn it, you know, um, be very cautious. Don't get nervous. It's easier to say than actually do, but don't get nervous. Don't look at it as, oh, I'm being monitored. Look at it as these guys are giving me an opportunity to make some money to take care of myself later on in life. Just another phase, like you said, just another chapter. It makes sense? Yeah, I do get ner- anxious when people watch me drive. So that's another thing. But don't, I mean, mm, that's not something that you could turn off. But mm. if you could find something that can distract you from the thought process of somebody watching you drive, you know, focus on what it is you have to do. Obviously, you're on a different side of the vehicle. Just take it slower. Just take it slower. Anything that's done with time and practice, it, it's, it, it, it can be accomplished. So um, I used to watch my son drive. I'm like, wow, this kid's whipping this thing around. You know, I, I couldn't see myself driving on that side of this, you know, on the side of the uh, 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 vehicle. And I drive trucks. But after seeing him do it and seeing my daughter do it, it's like, oh, okay, it, it can be done. Um, and that's why I'm encouraging anybody, hey, if that's if that's your major concern, don't don't let it don't let it psychologically whoop you before you even do it. Cause in about I'm trying four, to, I'm trying to. Four, four months from now, you're gonna be like, Yeah, it was it was a little difficult, but I passed it. Now uh, I want to hear the story. That's what I want to do. I want to hear the story later on. You're gonna give me one, right? A good one. Of course. Or a bad one. You're going to tell me about how bad it was and the dog's chasing you and all that stuff. I want, I want to hear it all. Don't chase <laughs> that. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I might have to body slam some dogs if that's the case. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> well, if that's what you need to do, then that's what's got to be done. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, is there anything that you, that you, that you want to, you know, get off, get off your, uh, get off your chest, get off your shoulders there? Anything you want to say? No, I mean, thank you. If it wasn't for you and your not advice, I'm pretty sure I would have like gave up on this process and be like, fuck it. This ain't for me. I don't have time and patience for this. Because it is a long process to get into yeah. it. You had patience to watch the videos, right? I watched some of it. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. At one point, I was trying to make it an, uh, a goal to watch all of it and then, you know, shit happened. Yeah, but but you got the jits of the videos, right? You read the comments. You interacted. Mm-hmm. I know you interacted. You took yeah. time. You did a lot of your own research, right? So if somebody gives you a book and tells you to do a book report, do you thank that person for the book? Or if you completed and got that book report and you got 100 on it, who do you, who do you pat on the shoulders? Yourself, right? It's both, though, because some, what if you don't even take the initiative to get the book? You know what I mean? People like to, like, procrastinate and make excuses. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, the book was there. That's what the channel is for. All you did was, and, and you took the time to watch these long, drawn-out videos of me just talking a bunch of stuff, and, and it kept you going. That's all it was. I can provide the information. You did the work. I wasn't there. I wasn't up at one o'clock in the morning on my feet. You did that. I didn't go through the what four a.m. Uh, orientation. You did that. So I appreciate the thanks, but always make sure that you give yourself more of the credit because you accomplished what others gave up on a long time ago. Think about that. All right. Touché, Mr. Touché. <laughs> one day. <laughs> what? Which island are you? Well. When I stop recording, I'll ask that. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. That, I'm, I'm single. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, stop that, sister. <laughs> no, um, no I'm, I'm so curious about the islands. My son went to Hawaii before I even got, and I, and I travel. That's the one place I didn't get to go yet. I've been to Europe and all these other places. Every freaking plane trip, plane, it just costs 
the, the, the cost to go to Hawaii from where I'm located, hell, from any place in this country, costs almost the same amount as me flying over to Europe. I'm like, why oh, are you yeah. so expensive? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And it's a long damn ride. What time is it over there? Oh, I think it's, yeah, it's 12.08. 12? 12? Wow. Hawaii doesn't have um, daylight savings time. Right, right. Because you only got, yeah, it's five o'clock here. Well, about 45 minutes is going to be dark while you still got Today some. dark because it's raining. This past couple of days, it's been raining. I love it. I'm glad I'm not working right now because it's sleep weather. <laughs> <laughs> we got, uh, let me see, is it? No, nah, it's pretty nice outside right now, but um, can't expose too much. A lot of people don't know where I live, and I like to keep it that way. But Kiki, it was a pleasure. One day, um, I'm waiting to hear the, the next chapter, and we're going to continue on, because I know you're going to have another chapter, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't sound too confident. No, it's not that. It's just... uh. I'm like trying to relax right now and not get nervous about it because when it happens, I know I'm not going to get any rest. So I'm trying to, this two weeks, I'm trying to just chill out and like my sleep schedule is so messed up. So I need to like reinvent myself. <laughs> it happens, dear. It happens. But I'm going to end the recording and then we can stay on for a minute. All right. Okay. All right. Stop.